Welcome to the next and last lesson where we're actually going to be fussing around in our Xcode project, particularly focusing on setting up a app icon as well as a launch screen. Before we jump into things, hit that like button down below, throw a fire and a rocket emoji in the comments if you've made it this far, kudos to you and let's get on with it. So I've actually got this app icon that I created already. Uh, I use Canva to create this for free. They've got a bunch of awesome resources there. It's really easy to use. Um, they should totally sponsor me. I'm not sponsored by them, but check out Canva. I've got this dinky app icon, but we're gonna use this for our icon um, as well as set up a launch screen. So let's get to it. So the first thing we wanna do is in Xcode, I'm gonna remove this from full screen. Let me also collapse some of these folders since we're just about done. We'll open up assets here, this assets catalog, and you should have a app icon asset in here, um, which tells you that it takes a single 1024 by 1024 uh, image, and we can drag this in. This image is indeed 1024 by 1024. Now that we have done that, we can just give this a stop and run again in our simulator, and we should see our app icon appear. Now, one common issue that people see with uh, Xcode and the simulator is, you actually saw it right there, it was very fast, but the icon shows up and just randomly disappears. So if you actually delete the app from your simulator and just run it again to do it, uh, to install it fresh and go back to your home screen, you should see the icon persist. So that's basically uh, setting up an app icon, super duper simple. Just make sure you create an image that's 1024 by 1024. Again, Canva is free to do so. The next thing we wanna do is set up a launch screen. So this is a screen that you see while your app is in the process of launching. Now, obviously this app is quite fast, but sometimes based on the device and how old it is and battery and a whole host of things, you're gonna see an intermediate screen. We actually saw it right there for a smidge second, and that's known as your launch screen. Now, the SwiftUI template doesn't actually give this to you out of the box. What we're going to do is create a new file that we're gonna set as our launch screen. So hit Command N for new file and search for a launch screen in here. Leave the name as default. And this will essentially give you a template, which is a storyboard that looks like this. You can actually um, use a drag and drop interface to adjust this as you'd like. And back in our project navigator, if we scroll down here, there is a section where we have app icons and launch screen. And what we will do is hit this little drop down for launch screen, and you should see that newly created launch screen, that storyboard file in here. Now we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time designing this. What I will do is uh, change the title to be to-do list and we will change the background color by opening up the attribute inspector here, this right panel. We'll pick a fun color, maybe we'll go with system purple, and I'll also change the text color here. We will go with white, and I will also adjust the font to be, let's see, bold is perfectly cool with me. I'll just bump it up to maybe like 44, and we're looking pretty good, so let's give it a build and run. And when our app is launching, we should see that purple screen for a smidge. We actually saw it right there. And that actually concludes building a to-do list app entirely in SwiftUI from scratch with Firebase. So fairly straightforward. If you think about it, what did we do? We did a lot of repetition in terms of the basic constructs. We have a view with an associated view model, with uh, you know logic and whatnot in there to handle interaction of buttons and whether or not one view should be shown instead of another. We also have models that represent the data types in our app. In our case, it's only a user and to-do list item. And in other, what we actually only adjusted was we added a single function, which is the extension on encodable protocol. This allows us to convert it to a dictionary. And in our to-do list app, we initialized Firebase here, Firebase app.configure, after we brought in our Google services info plist file, which has all the information for our Firebase project. So if you made it this far, 
Huge congrats. Give yourself a round of applause. Let me know if you would like to see anything in this project change down in the comments. Source code will be made available for this project. I appreciate you all watching and sticking around. Hope to see you in other lessons, series, and videos across the channel while we continue building and polishing iOS, iPad, Mac, and watchOS apps. Thanks again for watching. I will see you in another video.